Some of you upvoted some comments on a recent video where a longtime subscriber offered to donate a really awesome part to my GSX build. I thank you guys for that because you felt the exact same way about it that I did. I had already completed the machine work for my short block when this offer arose and I didn't expect for a second that something like this would come up. Well it did. Thank you Domestic Killer. You're a kind and extremely generous contributor to this channel. You have a clear understanding of what I'm doing here on YouTube and have demonstrated the same spirit with this gift. I'm not here to brag, to solicit donations, or to make product endorsements. I'm here to document my journey through what people in the DSM community have already done. I hope that sharing my experience gives others the same satisfaction that I have from it. The beautifully ironic truth is, now I'm getting a taste of someone else's experience that I've never had. You just turned the tables on me, Rob. Thank you. Even though it changes the direction of my build to accommodate it now, I'm grateful for this opportunity because it stays on theme with raising parts from the dead. If I can make this work, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Some of you are experiencing deja vu right now. Soon after I posted this, I discovered I'd credited the wrong shop with this crankshaft's modifications. The shop that originally ground this crank has been out of business for years. After talking to the owner of the shop that I mistakenly credited, I pulled the video because I was wrong about its identity and because he does things differently today than what you see here. My bad, I'll own that. The work performed here to refurbish a crankshaft is what I wanted to bring back to the channel. I apologize to the 1700 of you who have already watched it, and I'm still every bit as grateful for it today as when it first showed up on my front porch. This crankshaft started out its life as a factory 6-bolt crank. It had roughly 8 pounds of counterweights shaved off of it, which relocates its mass closer to its center line. The leading sides of what's left of the counterweights were radiused and the trailing edges were knife-edged. This shape is used because it creates less turbulence and chaos in the oil pan. As the counterweight passes through the oil, it causes less aeration and frothing of the oil. A factory DSM crank is already a beefy and very well balanced crankshaft. Many people put down big numbers using the factory 6 bolt crank with no modifications whatsoever. It's a used crankshaft. It was in an aluminum rod motor that lifted the head and burned out the head gasket sealing surface. It apparently faced some kind of abuse or contamination in the process because some of the journals are a little scratched up, but I hope it can be polished out. Everywhere else aside from that wear, this crank is a work of art. We're about to discover whether or not there are defects that can't be seen and whether or not it can live to fight another day. I think I speak for every machinist alive when I say it's important whenever you go get work done like this that you bring donuts. Bring donuts, okay? Just make sure that you bring your machinist donuts. So what we're going to do today is check for cracking around the journals and the fillets using a non-destructive magnetic ultraviolet dive penetration test. Some people call it magnafluxing, but magnaflux is a brand, not a verb. When a ferrous part is covered with this dye and placed in a magnetic field, it's drawn into the cracks where it reflects more ultraviolet light, making the cracks visible to the naked eye. With this type of magnetic dye penetrant test, a crack would show up as a fine bright yellowish green line. Since the crank showed zero stress damage, we're going to see if we can polish up these journals and take measurements to see if they all spec out. One little groove. Oh yeah, it's got some scratches. It's just where that metal migrated. Mm -hmm. I 
I can do one, two things. We can either just, you know, we can measure it, see where it is. I mean, it'll be fine. The little scratch is not going to, not really going to affect anything. Um, or we can hit it with a different grit, take it down a little bit. I don't mind missing a little bit. You know what standard is on the Oh, uh, one seven. Oh, yeah. uh, if you measured it, I could. I thought it was one seven seven something. That's right. I think it is. It's one, like came in the Honda room or something like that. I got seven seventy and a half. Seventy and a half. It's it's one seven seventy. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a zero. The same as close as yep. real close to the Honda. The big ones are two point two three. Two forty. No, that's right. Two three two forty three and a half. That sounds right. You making this up? I mean, shoot, I've done it all, got the service manual, didn't bring it with me, don't have access to YouTube. You want to go ahead and knock it down? Or? Yeah. It yeah. still may not come out. I understand. It's always kind of touch and go when it comes to those little scratches, you know, they look and they feel like nothing. Yeah. You just take a half a thousand off of it and not affect them at all. What grid is that? 400. 400. What do you normally polish with? 600? 400. You polish with 400? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, your roughing, your roughing polish though is a 320. Okay. That be your first step after grinding. Okay. And then you narrow it down. You, they, you can get to like a cork belt. Cork? Cork. You put a super right. bling on it? And then they have tape machines, um, none of which we have. Really. No. It's my own silly stupidity for not having the main and rod specs in hand when I brought this up here for service. Those specifications are probably something you'll need to provide if you ever have something like this done. better a little bit yeah I, w I wouldn't do any more to it yep it knocked the grit right off man by the, by the time I got as to that as long one. as there's no high spots we should be good yeah. I mean this low spots don't do anything so if that's a crack or a groove or you know something's cut into it yeah not, it won't be a crack but if that's a groove or something's cut into it then hold oil <laughs> That's right. The journals on the crankshaft I was going to use are in better shape than this one because they don't reflect a single defect. I was a little bit disappointed that the scratches didn't polish all the way out, but you can't feel them after polishing and there's nothing embedded in the crank journal. This isn't a deal breaker to me. Because the crank is still within spec, I'm going to roll with it. The only possible deal breaker for me is if it were out of balance. Speaking of balance, when you balance a DSM crankshaft, you do not use or need bob weights. All the weight is already on a center line. You zero balance the crank and separately weigh and match your rods, pistons, wrist pins, and all of the fasteners involved. If you can't mix and match wrist pins to balance them out, then you have to grind some material off to get all of their combined weights within a gram.
There seems to be some misinformation in the form of opinion floating around about these butcher crankshafts. Some people with no experience with this product whatsoever think that removing the counterweights compromises its strength. The way I see it, the proof is in the pudding. This machine measures balance to within a hundredth of a gram. Let's see how well this butcher specs out after several years in a 600 wheel horsepower car and enough boost to stretch 12 millimeter head studs. Dead nuts, zero, zero. See the lower line? It says remove nothing. You can't ask for better than that on a balancer. Domestic Killa, thank you for this gift. It's changed both the performance and the appearance of the assembly I'll be filming shortly. You're a legend among men because that's exactly what everyone here wants to see. I appreciate Ballast Machine putting up with me in this nine and a half pound camera so I could bring you this video. This butcher crankshaft is just beautiful, man. I'm grateful and I can't wait to go out and pound on it.